I'm not gonna lie to you guys, this is probably going to be the longest, most ambitious video that I've made on my channel to date. I mean, this series that we're talking about here, we're talking about a full website with a bunch of loopholes and a bunch of rabbit holes that seem to have no possible end in sight. You got an entire Reddit page, uh, an Instagram, a Twitter, and more than one YouTube channel. And it's possible that there's more out there that I haven't even uncovered. Like, my experience so far, right, going through this ARG, this, this digital horror, it's been like, you know, after I figure out one mystery, another one immediately comes and takes its place. It, it just seems to have no end. There's just so much that makes sense, and then a whole lot more that doesn't. There's probably a lot more that I've missed just because of how deep this rabbit hole goes. The digital horror series that I'm talking about today, of course, is Chess Kids Archive, and we're going to be taking a deep dive into that together. Alright, now the first video on this channel, um, it's titled, give me a minute. Hold on, get, let me just get this right. Chess Kids, chess.com. Website uncovered footage, rare, lost media found. Yes, that is the title of uh, episode one. And the, the video starts off pretty normal at first. Um, it's just your run of the mill uh, point and click flash game from the early 2000s. What could possibly go wrong here? You wanna take a guess? You sure? You, you sure about that? You, you want to take a- As the scene opens up, we can see that the game is made by a woman named Sarah, although at this point I, I couldn't quite make out what the last name was. Um, anyways, all I could make out, again, at this time, was Sarah R., uh, but we'll keep note of this name for the time being. Just over a minute in, things start to get a bit more shall we say, flavorful. Um, the website suddenly starts to glitch in a very unsettling way. At one point, the picture frame where Sarah's face once was is completely empty, and immediately after this, we're shown the following. Microphone and camera access. Now, I know for a fact that if Tim and Moby asked for access to my camera and my microphone back when I was 10 years old, I, I probably would have said yes. I was, a, I was a really stupid fucking kid, guys. What, you thought I was gonna decline that shit? No, I, I was a fucking dumbass. Now, images flash very quickly on the screen in this video, but at the end of the video, in one of the very last frames, a darkened image is shown. This is what the image looks like brightened up. While I couldn't quite make out what the image was of at first, I was able to decipher the word enter at the top, so I initially assumed that this was a house of sorts, and as the series will soon reveal, it is. It's a, it's a house, and we'll get to see it again later on. Now, in the second episode, um, the video opens up again in its typical blurry manner. Of course, it wouldn't be entertaining if we could see it, guys, so you gotta think on big brain timing right here. Now, up until now, we've been shown a repeating reminder on the screen advising us to save our game's progress. In this particular video, we get to witness the Reading with Ben minigame. No, not that one. I, I mean the cool Ben. With swag and drip. Also, can we just appreciate the clicking sound effect for a moment? <laughs> The player clicks on a book, and we're greeted with Trouble on Mayhill Farm. Well, you know, even though I can't read shit, I, I think it's perfectly clear what's going on here. Um, at some point while turning pages, the animal gains sentience and greets the viewer with a welcoming smile. Uh, I have no idea what these words say, but I think it says he got an idea. Now, right after this page, and it only shows for a split second, we're shown an image of this Winnie the Pooh looking ass motherfucker. Not sure what the significance of that was, but I just wanted to point it out. I thought it was pretty cool, all right? And right after that, we we're shown an image of a house, first with a white background, then with a dark one. The player turns the page only to find nothing. They keep turning it over and over until the page gets darker. Then a red figure appears on the screen. It gets closer. Now it's in the hallway. It walks forward and opens a door. We're then shown a black screen 
until the red creature's face slowly appears on the screen, staring vacantly at the viewer. Creepy music starts to play, and we're shown another more realistic version of what I assume to be the hallway from before. The creature appears again, their eyes starting to become more and more anime by the second. Uh, several images flash on the screen after this. Then it's this... Mandela catalog looking demon thing that didn't quite make the cut, and then the anime cat again. The end! <laughs> Wasn't that a fun story, guys? Did you Okay. But, but, uh, rut row, uh, where'd Ben go? The player clicks out of the reading section and clicks on another button from the main menu that I can't quite decipher. The following message is then shown on the screen. It's true. They used to tell us this back when I was growing up. Uh, the player opens up a game, I think. Uh, they click on a button and are shown a small beam. They click on another button and are shown what I believe to be a heavily distorted image of uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, clicking on the next button gives them an image of Sprinkle! Yay! Sprinkle time! Yay! Suddenly the game cuts to an image of a road in the middle of the woods illuminated only by a single street light. Heavily distorted music starts to play and the game starts to glitch. After fading to black, if you pay close attention, you might notice that there's a face staring back at us. This is what the face looks like when brightened up. Actually, she, why does she, why does she kind of look like me a little bit? Of course, this is where the video ends. Moving on to the uh, third episode, or I guess in my chronological list of things. Uh, <laughs> moving on to this third video here. Um, the video opens up to yet another game, and we're shown the house that was previewed through the heavily distorted image in episode one. Interestingly, we're getting shown a lot of forest imagery so far. Um, the player enters the house, and initially there's not much to take note of here. The player clicks on the image of what I assume to be a blue cat, and up close, we see it's a poster of the character wandering through the woods with a flashlight. The words, Forest Adventure, can be seen at the top. Clicking on play takes the player to a game, one that I can only assume is called Forest Adventure at this point. Suddenly, the player is transported to a photorealistic forest with an up arrow and a down arrow designed to help the player navigate the forest. They are constricted to a single path, which I find incredibly unnerving for some reason. Well, never mind the single path part. Now there's many of them. <laughs> oh, yay! Obviously, the landscape is starting to change here, and the whole wrongness of the situation becomes more and more apparent. The player clicks on something again. I, I can barely see shit. Come on, guys, cut me some slack. Um, it's a missing persons poster, one that I unfortunately cannot decipher. The player navigates away from this area, and we're shown footage of someone wandering through the forest, perhaps even having their own forest adventure. Closed captions appear momentarily on the screen. She has to be out here somewhere. By chance, could it be, um, Sarah R. Trills? Good sir, could it could it be? I mean, judging by the very last minute addition of her name to the title, I I think it might be. All of a sudden, <laughs> now, now what could this possibly be implying? Now after this, we get a little interview from what I assume to be Sarah herself, and I'm going to let this this little part play out here. Well, gosh, you know, I'd say it it goes back a while. I've always been into coding and making little things for my friends to share around. You know, I've been messing with computers since I was able to type. My dad was a technical engineer, so we would get all that stuff early. Um, but, you know, I'd say specifically chess.com really isn't just a kid's website. It's an entertainment website. Anyone can enjoy our games. There are probably things in that game that will go over kids' heads and then things that older people really wouldn't understand. But we wanted to make it something accessible, something something fun for everybody. Well, including me, it's about six or seven. I do most of the coding. My friend Ellen, uh, Ellen Masterson, does all the artwork. All of it. Everyone else helps with coding and music and sound and video and just doing everything they can to make Chez.com stand out, be its own thing. <laughs> yeah, thank, thank you. We definitely, we really give it our all for 
all of us pouring our blood, sweat, and tears into it. From this clip, we learn that at least six to seven people are responsible for the website. And Sarah's friend, Ellen Masterson, is also a part of the team. Um, she's mainly responsible for the artwork. Now, after listening to this recording, uh, clicking on the flower reveals another jump scare with a very short clip of uh, Sarah's voice glitching through. Some more glitching noises can be heard, and we return to the footage of the forest. Without warning, it sends us back to the orange room in the house. Clicking on one of the paintings on the wall reveals another missing person's poster, only this time it's Sarah. The footage glitches repeatedly, and then we are shown nothing but a black screen with Sarah's face lingering in the darkness. Footage of someone driving down the road momentarily appears on the screen, and then we are sent back to the homepage once more. This little blue guy, however, isn't too happy about it. Now in this fourth video, uh, the intro of this video is a series of comments from viewers who claim to remember playing Chess Kids when they were little. It clearly shows that whoever is behind the Chess Kids archive channel knows that we're watching, and their intentions at this point aren't exactly made transparent, but just by the addition of this in the intro, it's, it's starting to seem a little bit more, um, malicious. The rest is simply a compilation of the videos we've watched so far. However, at the very end, something interesting happens. We're shown the various characters featured on the website and their names. The last character to be shown is the same one that was shown on the missing persons poster in the third episode. A face similar to Sarah's is seen hiding behind the character's card and the footage immediately glitches out. The player navigates to the homepage of the website and clicks on the next page button and selects one of the games from the list. A tip appears on the screen, inviting the player to take breaks in between games and go outside, enjoying the trees and nature. I'm starting to think that the Lorax is haunting this, this goddamn game here, Jesus Christ. Once again, I, I do want to note this though, a reference to a forest is being made, so now we can kind of understand that, you know, the forest is going to be a central theme here moving forward. Thankfully, of course, this player is a Discord moderator, so they won't be going outside anytime soon. Uh, they start to play the birthday game, completely unfazed by the horrors we've witnessed so far. A cutscene plays where the blue cat named Chester explains the rules of the game, and I'll go ahead and let that part play out. Oh, hi! I haven't seen you around. Can I tell you something on my mind? And you gotta promise not to tell anybody. My friend Lola's having a birthday party. She was going pretty smooth until that storm came by. My friend Lola's having a birthday party. She was going pretty smooth until that storm came by last night and totally blew all the presents all over the town. You know, I'm just one cat. There's, there's only a little bit I can do, but uh, if only I had some help. That gives me an idea. You can help me, right? Awesome. All right. Around the town, there'll be some gifts and items like cake, presents, balloons, anything that would work with a party. If you see something, click on it with your mouse. There'll be signs around town to help direct you on where to go. If you see any of my friends around, they might have some clues to help you out. Also, Make sure you don't tell Lola. Also, make sure you don't tell Lola. Also, make sure actor. you don't tell also, Lola. Make sure you... Well, what are you waiting for? Let's go! Listen, I, I might not be a chef, okay? Or, or a party planner, mind you, but let me tell you. I watched my fair share of Cake Boss back in the day, and, well, I think I know what I'm doing. The next section of the video shows the player finding a purple gift box with a necklace inside, and then a telephone. Clicking on the telephone plays a cute little voice message from the rabbit character, but clicking on the red button plays this sound. <laughs> Okay, whatever you say, Sarah, jeez. Navigating outside causes the player to run into what I assume to be Lola. Homegirl won't stop bitching about her birthday. Okay, we get it, sis. Uh, the player moves to a level with a clock man. He offers to give the player the gift in his hand in exchange for playing a math game. 
After refusing, a heavily distorted image of the clock appears behind him before the dialogue ends. The player walks inside the windmill and clicks on a picture on the table. A woman and a man can be seen standing side by side in the picture. Heading up the stairs leads the player to another gift box and inside is an indiscernible object. Immediately after this, the droning sound of a phone receiver beeping plays in the background. The player begins walking down a hallway and into a room that immediately starts to glitch out. They find a phone again and click on the green button. Now I'm gonna give a brief audio warning here because the audio does start to kind of peak quite a bit at this point. So, you know, if you're sensitive to loud sounds, I'm gonna give y'all a, a little timestamp to skip to. Right here. Uh, uh, calling you back. Uh, just, you know, we're here at the studio right now. You see if you're gonna come in. I know yesterday was pretty. Did not need to feel as if I just joined a COD lobby for a moment there, but I did. Now from what little I could understand there, it, it sounds like he was asking Sarah to come in for a meeting due to some issues with the website, and there was some questioning as to whether or not she'd be there. Um, but again, I'm, I'm not too sure. It was really muffled and I couldn't quite make out what was being said, but I think I heard that correctly. The player exits the lighthouse and clicks on the clock man once more only for him to start glitching out also. This time, the player is only given the option to say yes. Of course, I mean, how could one refuse? He's quite the salesman after all. A game of tic-tac-toe commences. The longer the game continues, the weirder things get, until a random image appears in the middle of the grid. And I can't quite make out what it is, but it looks um, very not good to me. Yeah, she, she doesn't look too good, actually. Unsurprisingly, the player wins after this series of events. <laughs> oh boy, what... What, what could possibly be inside this box? I'm so excited to open it. Ah yes, the greatest gift of all. The gift of unending time as we march ever closer to our deaths with each passing day. I almost forgot about that. Another message appears on the screen as the player heads north. It says the following. If a hundred of your friends went missing, would you try and find them? A hundred friends? <laughs> Bold assumption. Moving on, anyways, we finally found our missing bear friend. Clicking on him causes him to start looking around shiftily. The player makes their way into the tree, guided only by the light of a candle. The player finds a gift at the end of the hallway, and inside is the same telephone from before. The following audio clip plays. <laughs> you would run the studio and then it's like uh it's like whenever i try to talk outside of work you just aren't very receptive so i just you know wasn't wondering if everything was okay between us um if you want to talk about something you can into you I just really care about you yeah just you know, you know and we can talk while some parts are a little bit hard to understand from what I could understand the dude's down bad he's down really really bad folks not good the player returns to the purple path from before and makes their way over to a blue house a note on the house reads come back tomorrow Harry the gift found icon pops up on the screen momentarily, and the player is given another gift. It's a flower pot, and based on the tag attached to it, it appears to be a gift from someone. The box appears again and starts to open, and I'm... 
I'm so sorry, but it opened so fucking slow. Dear God, the whole time, it felt like I was stuck in traffic. Also, for a brief moment, um, you can see what I assume to be Sarah's face in the bottom right corner. Um, anyways, we finally get an image of the phone again. And genuinely, I don't know why this part made me laugh so hard, but please, please just watch it. That was what got me to laugh in case you, you couldn't figure it out. Uh, the more I hear that though, the more he's just starting to sound a little little too much like Cool Cat. It's a little too much Cool Cat for me. Maybe, maybe tone down the sauce a little bit. Now all of a sudden we're in a room with the character that's implied to be Sarah and <laughs> weird moaning sounds and distorted music is, is playing in the background and then Lola interrupts to thank us for the birthday gifts and then this happens. Whoa, looks like you saw something you really weren't supposed to see. The cool cat alternate universe is expanding. <laughs> Everything is dead quiet for a few seconds until, oh my god, it's Sarah! Hi, Sarah! A wholesome little message from the whole cast appears on the screen, and the player clicks on yes. It really seems like Sarah was dearly missed. Or was she? Now, in the fifth episode here, um, this video essentially shows us the good ending for Lola's birthday game. Apart from a few minor glitches, the beginning seems pretty ordinary. However, the end is what really stands out to me. Lola glitches out and turns into Sarah. An image of what I assume to be Sarah's corpse slowly slides into the frame. Then the unnamed man from the previous episode can be heard in the background repeatedly saying, forget about us. I'm gonna let that clip play out here so you guys can, can, can know that I'm not making this up. And of course, with this comes a distant picture of the man and the woman being shown once more. It's pretty obvious here that the man and the woman in the painting are Sarah and the individual who's talking here. Um, and something drove their relationship apart. Okay, moving on to the sixth video on my list here. Now, I haven't covered all of them, but there's a few uploads on the Chess Kids Archive YouTube channel um, that are actually songs and sound effects and other various pieces of media that were supposedly taken from the website. Now, some of them contain secrets, while others n not necessarily. Um, they were probably just meant purely to serve as a filler or entertainment, or maybe even as the uh, mixtape that plays in my head when I'm maladaptive daydreaming. But anyways, I'm actually going to encourage you guys to go and check out the rest of the songs for yourself, and you might you might actually be impressed. They're pretty good. Um, but there is one song in particular that I had to talk about, um, as I think that it has a lot to do with the actual storyline that's, that's taking place here. Um, the song is a cover of a Beatles song titled I'll Get You, and I assume the title of the video is an abbreviation for Valentine's Chess Kids Chester Vocal. I'm not going to play the song out here because, you know, me and the YouTube copyright system have had many a fist fight in the past, uh, but the lyrics are as follows. Imagine I'm in love with you. It's easy cause I know. I've imagined I'm in love with you many, many, many times before. It's not like me to pretend, but I'll get you. I'll get you in the end. Yes, I will. I'll get you in the end. Keep those lyrics in mind. They're very disturbing for a reason, but keep them in mind. All right, in the seventh video here, uh, the following video is portrayed to be footage of a lost game on the Chess Kids website called 
Harry's Farm Games. Um, it starts up with the opening card, helping a friend in need is the best thing you can do. In the next scene, we are shown the red cat character from before standing in a forest. As we approach him, we get some of the most gut-wrenching, emotionally charged dialogue I've ever heard in, uh, well, any piece of cinema. Oh, hey there, Chester. You snuck up on me at just the right time. I was just harrying around. I have lots of work to get done around the farm. Say, if you weren't too busy, could you help me out with all of this? Hopper is out there, but haha, <laughs> knowing him it's less hard work and more hard play. You will help me? Ray, here, my farm is right this way. I think we just found the most underpaid voice actor of the century. Time for farm fun! Uh, the Red Cat graciously invites us over to his farm, where the player participates in various farm activities. Um, after clicking on some, you know, doodads and dingle dongles, the player discovers a rabbit minigame. The rabbit explains that they spilled ink on their vegetables and can't identify them as a result. It's up to the player to help them out. I don't know if you noticed, but the whole time, the bug character representing Sarah can be seen lurking behind the tree. All is not well in the forest, it seems, and I speak for the trees. While attempting to identify the last vegetable, the game starts to glitch, and all the veggies soon disappear. The broccoli is then replaced with something, um, very phallic-shaped. After that, the player navigates back to the farm. Clicking on the corn takes the player to the corn man. Not much happens here, apart from the corn man being a washed-up stand-up comic in a cornfield. There's probably some guy out in the Midwest doing that right now. Whoever you are, man, I believe in you. Uh, who knows, maybe you'll even get your own uh, Netflix special. How does that sound? It's not too uncommon, trust me. Clicking around some more takes the player to another minigame, where the main goal is to help Cool Cat pick the biggest carrot. Uh, suddenly, closed captions reveal a coded message. And try as I might, I could not find a single way to decode this one. Um, if anyone has any suggestions, feel free to let me know in the comments, but this is a recurring uh, thing, unfortunately. There's a lot of ciphers and codes here that I, I wasn't too keen on solving because I'm, bi I'm big dumb dumb. Uh, but yeah, any help would be greatly appreciated. The longer the player clicks around, the more the game starts to glitch. Eventually, the whole thing seems to freeze and we can hear what sounds like typing in the background. This typing seems to cause the screen to turn into this. A cryptic image is briefly shown, and we're greeted by Chester's disgraced cousin once more. His audio keeps glitching out a fuck ton here, but he essentially repeats the dialogue from before. Now all of a sudden, the drawing changes to a photorealistic image of a house, before immediately sending us back to the game. Again, I'm not going to play out the audio here because it peaks a lot, and it's super fucking loud. Believe me, I tested it. It's loud. It would appear, though, that our player found the fruit quiz. <laughs> oh, joyous day. Time to get fruity. Uh, clicking on each fruit causes a bunch of audio glitches, and seemingly random audio from other parts of the website start to play. Of course, in typical Chess Kids fashion, um, all of this leads up to a jump scare of Sarah's distorted face appearing on the screen with her muffled screams in the background. Oh, never mind. Now it's just the guy from before. Oh, oh, great. After this admittedly horrifying series of events, we're taken to the shed out back, the best part of any game. We're told by the farm cat that all his tools are scattered around the woods and he needs our help to find them. So we're given a list of all the tools and off we go. Clicking around the woods leads the player to a loading screen. Happy memories. What's your happiest memory? When the player makes their way back to the path, they're greeted by a rusty robot. They explain that they need an oil can in order to cure their rustiness. Ah yes, the age-old tale. The player sets off in search of more tools and a bottle of Crisco oil. Uh, oddly enough, the player manages to find an item that wasn't mentioned on the list of tools, the book of poems addressed to none other than Sarah herself. I'm not even gonna read this. This corny ass Winnie the Pooh bullshit. I, essentially, for those of you who who can't be bothered to read, it's a love poem clearly likening Sarah to Honey, and I guess the poet is a is a bee or some shit. I, I don't know. The next poem is about Sarah's cherry lips and just how much he wants to suck on them a little bit. Now the third poem gets a little weird. Yeah, I know, as if the first two weren't 
weird already to just shut up shut up okay uh now this one i am going to read because because fuck you that's why have you seen have you heard a hare is in my green green lawn he is hopping to and fro he smiles as he tramples my little carrot farm munching munching all he can eat stuffs his face a pleasant gorge his feast will last until past three when the rifle comes from storage <laughs> Cook us up some hair stew. The broth is ripe with carrots. Now, I wouldn't have read this if I didn't have many, many theories brewing about in my dome right now, but we will be revisiting this poem later on. It's important. Now, the next poem reads, Between the thorns and the petals. Now watch. He said, Remember to pluck between the thorns and the petals, or else your fingers will get pricked. She nods and says, I understand. Now white roses switch to pink. Now understand, she said, remember to set the table. Knives to forks to spoons. He nods and says, I understand. Now white tablecloth switch to pink. I'm sorry, how can you mess up setting a table that bad? I, I know cotillion isn't for everyone, but, but come on, dude, are you serious? Jeez. All right, here's the next poem. Smiling Man. Smiling Man lived in the Smiling Flat, up on the Smiley Hill. He lived his smiley life every day working a smiley job with his smiley kids and smiley wife. Her name was Barbara, I think. One day, Smiling Man went out of his smiley work early, saying hello to smiley passerbys, grabbing smiling groceries, getting into his smiling car, heading home to his smiley life and smiley kids and smiley wife, when suddenly his smiling flat began to cry 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 oh smiley wife he called out i think her name was barbara but all was left upon the fridge was a note that said goodbye crying man lives in a crying flat upon a crying hill he lived his smiley life her name was Barbara, if I remember correctly. All right, now this is the last poem on uh, in the book that I wanted to make note of here. The way we love, the way we love, the way we love. Grown-ups say the love is farce. Grown-ups say we don't know because we are young. Grown-ups warn us of the danger. Grown-ups try and tell us we don't know forever. Love is the way we hold each other. Love is the happy apples we eat. Love is the candy clouds. Love is the green grass. Love is the sweet dew of morning. Love is the empty room. Love is the curls. Love is the hair in the sink. Love is the way you talk to me. Love is the way you tell me what's wrong with me. Love is the way you talk to me. Love is the way you don't talk to me. Love is the way you close the door in my face. Love is the way you talk to me. Love is the way you talk behind my back. Love is the way you... I, I, I'm sorry, I don't know why... <laughs> But let me get it together. Love is the way you lie to me. Love is the way you never listen to me. <laughs> love is <laughs> love is the way you yell at me. Love is the hair in the sink. Love is the the what we love is the what we tell ourselves it's going to be okay. Love is the way you spend money on me. Love is the way you make me feel. Love is the way you make me feel. Love is the way you make me feel. Love is the way I remember feeling. Love is the way you make me feel. Love is the way you talk to me. Love is the way your lips curl when you smile at me. Love is the way you call me bad names. Love is the way you call me weak. Love is the way you lie to me. Love is the way you carve into me. Love is the way you walk with me. Love is the way you make me smile. Love is the way that grown-ups don't understand. Love is the way that love is the way that you talk to me. Love is the way we love. Love is the way you. Love is the way you make me feel inside. I want the inside to be my outside. I want to feel love. Love is the way you feel. Did any of that sink in? Not me neither. And then we get, of course, a little picture of um, Michael Landon in the bottom right corner. V very nice. See, I knew he wrote this poem. See, it had Michael Landon written all over it. Uh, I lied, by the way. This is not the last poem. <laughs> There's another one after this. Farm kitties. 
This is my favorite one, by the way. Little bitty kitty, sitting in a barn, he doesn't belong, all the animals eat on the farm. Pig cow, horse, sheep, chicken. Maybe the farm cat likes to be in the barn for reasons other than eating the farm food, sleeps on the hay, licks his paws, self-soothe. For you, my love, Harrison uh, Michaels. I think that's what his last name says, Michaels. Well, now we have a name to put to a face. After that, the screen cuts to black and the rabbit character from before can be heard saying, we are then sent back to the home screen and the video ends. In this eighth video, uh, the video titled Bump Title MP3, Lost Media Found, we are initially played what almost sounds like a normal set of drums, but we all know where this leads, don't we? The song cuts and we get nothing but a black screen at first. The muffled sound of a guy talking can be heard before the song switches to a reversed version of that Beatles cover we heard previously. The last frame is a polar picture of what appears to be Sarah and, well, what I am now assuming to be her ex-boyfriend. In this ninth video, uh, the majority of it is just Chester singing a holly jolly Christmas, but I wouldn't be showing this to you if it was really a, a holly jolly Christmas, would I? The video starts off normally with Chester singing along as normally as he can, and a few familiar characters appearing on screen. And then right away, of course, everything goes to shit, like always. Everything goes completely haywire. The background image then cuts to a picture of Sarah's mutilated face. I can only assume that at this point, she's well past her expiration date. Now, the next entry in the series shows a video of someone walking through the woods displayed on the Chess Kids website. Chester can be heard periodically speaking over the footage, quite obviously with some pre-recorded sound bites that were probably meant to be heard in an entirely different context. At a certain point during the footage, the person recording the video can be heard calling out for Sarah, shortly after the footage disappears. This video shows a playthrough of a lost Halloween minigame. As usual, everything starts off innocently, only for all the festive joy to be ripped away from us. And by the way, literally halfway through writing this script, um, I did manage to figure out what all the names of the characters are. Um, the clock is ticking Tim, the rabbit is Hopper, the red cat is Harry, Lola is the pink cat, and again, the bear is Benny. Uh, I'm going to be referring to all these characters by their, their names from now on so that it gets a little less confusing. Anyways, in the game, we are invited to come along with the Chess Kids for some Halloween hooligans. And as such, some Halloween mini games appear on the screen for the player. Clicking on a graveyard in the background leads the player to a grave labeled your name. Kind of a fucked up thing to put in a kid's game, if you ask me. I mean, I mean sure, everything we've seen so far, you know, that's... It's a little something, but this? Oh, this is just, this is just taking it too far. After clicking on one of the mini games, the screen temporarily flickers and then the player is transported to a hallway. As the player walks down the hallway, it gets darker. They run into a jack-o'-lantern along the way and then a little goober jumps out at the character. But the goober is revealed to be none other than Sarah's B-Sona. A, a loading screen appears telling the player that they uncovered a secret. The screen fades to black, and then we get a super fast slideshow of what I assume to be someone's uh, physique at different angles. I've slowed down the footage a bit here, by the way, so as to avoid any, you know, uh, photo sensitivity issues. Um, all the while, of course, sobbing can be heard in the background. After this, a sound bite of what I assume to be a character line from the game, and I guess plays in the background, repeatedly saying stop. The stop sound bite gets louder, and we are then shown an image of the bee with a speech bubble saying goodbye forever. Again, another reference to a breakup here. After listening closely, I believe I can also make out the character audio saying bye, but it's kind of muffled, so it's a little hard to say. Uh, the screen fades to black, and then the player is transported back to the home screen. Only this time, it's completely empty. Oh no, just kidding, they're, they're back now, yay! Uh, that's where the video ends. Now, the last video we're going to be taking a look at here is a series of holiday classics, collected from the Chess Kids website, of course. Now, this video is 53 minutes long. And boy, let me tell you, it, it's a lot to sort through, okay? Now, thankfully, a lovely comment from Neurotoxin Detected, I think I said that right, did all the hard work for me. <laughs> Aren't they just a, 
a sweetheart for that. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for that. Uh, so I, I don't have to watch the whole video, just, just sorting through it and, and looking for anomalies. So you're the best. Thank you for that. Now, at first, nothing too crazy happens, apart from some minor audio glitches. Things start to get disturbing, however, right around the uh, 15 minutes 49 seconds mark. The sounds of a door opening and closing can be heard, and then a couple of minutes later, groaning sounds can be heard in the background. At 24 minutes 40 seconds, we can hear someone's muffled screams, presumably Sarah's at this point. At 29 minutes 22 seconds, a loud scream that gets abruptly cut off plays, and let me tell you, this was an experience for me at the time because I was wearing headphones at full volume, mind you. Never again, though. Never again. Uh, at 33 minutes 36 seconds, we can see a sideways portrait of Sarah labeled with indecipherable text. And the whole time, a corpse can be seen lingering in the background. At this point, the music is slowed down and distorted, completely unrecognizable. It almost sounds like a sobbing woman is weakly singing Christmas music at this point, with a few random beeping sounds sporadically littered throughout the audio. The distortion of the audio gets worse as time goes on. Now, certain parts are played in reverse here, um, but at 37 minutes, 34 seconds, Sarah can be heard saying, I'm alone, with a few other unintelligible words mixed in. Something else to make note of is the audio played at the very end of the video, which is also in reverse. Okay. Sorry for all my goodness. I just figured it out. Um, again, like this, this way. The one thing I could make out from this was, oh, I'm sorry for all my, and that, that's it. I couldn't make out jack shit after that. Now, by now, you guys might be thinking we've covered just about everything, but I'm gonna tell you right now that what we just covered was only the tip of the iceberg. Well, there's way more. In fact, there's an entire website filled with hidden links, uh, hidden messages, hidden codes, hidden web pages, hidden everything. It, 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 it was a nightmare trying to figure this stuff out, guys. Please, prayers up in the chat. Or uh, if you don't pray, I don't know what to tell you because neither do I. <laughs> Now, in the About section of the channel, there's a link that takes you to this accursed website that contains many more secrets. At first, nothing seems to be out of the ordinary. It just appears to be a website poorly set up through some very basic HTML. Clicking on the link labeled Current Findings takes you to a page with some broken MP3 files and a link to the channel's most recent upload. Speaking of shitty HTML, I decided to take a look at the page source to see if I could find anything. And of course I did. At the bottom of the code, there's a paragraph section labeled Merry Christmas, Sarah. And below that is what I assume to be some type of conversation between two employees. It reads, you're still here? It's so late. Can you hear me? Hello? Oh, yeah, sorry. Just want to get this thing done in time. Who knew syncing the vocals would be this tricky? Haha. <laughs> Only so many times I can listen to my own voice. Can I hear what you've got? Sure. Here, let me open a finished one. Is the volume on? I can't hear anything. I think so. It should be. Yeah, it's all on. You left the headphones in, dude. Here, I'll just listen on them. It's rough at the moment. Lucy wanted to re-record the vocals on this one. It sounds good, though. That's what I said. She can't come in till Monday though. Sprained ankle. Shit, it wasn't that bad, was it? Like the accident? Apparently not. Harris said she was just in the back of some kid's car. Parking lot crash. Her parents were pissed. Christ, glad that kid's all right. This one is track three. Now to me, it's unclear who exactly these people are that are talking, but we know that they're both employees, right? Um, it's interesting that they felt the need to place this on the website, though, hidden in the HTML. I'm not really quite sure what the significance of this conversation was. Nevertheless, we learn that there's another young employee that works there named Lucy through this conversation. And, of course, we know now that uh, 
Harrison, our lovely Harrison, is also an employee. Navigating back to the home page and scrolling down will take us to an image of a door. Clicking on the image leads to an unlisted video on a cryptically named YouTube channel. Now, putting this video into words is challenging. Uh, I'll just let the first few seconds of this video play out so you can kind of get a feel for it. Now, I really want to take note of the words that appear on the screen here. I don't like it when they raise their voices. I don't want to do this anymore. You have done nothing but hurt me. I'm tired. And of course, the title of the video being Crying Over You is very foreboding, if you ask me. Heading back over to the channel reveals there's even more videos for me to dissociate to. Yay! Uh, now, the first video on the channel is it's so much of a banger. And I'm just so afraid of playing it for fear of of being eradicated by the copyright gods. Now I want to pay attention to the recurring phrase here, Alhina Hydrothrosis Veranda, which also happens to be the channel name. Uh, now the name Alhina means a ring and happens to be a star in the Gemini constellation. Hydrothrosis is inflammation of a joint cavity, and Veranda is essentially a roof patio or a roofed porch. Now, how do any of these tie together? They absolutely fucking don't. I did all that research for no reason because <laughs> I learned actually from this lovely comment by a Leslie Jelly that this is actually an anagram for Sarah and Harry, lovers in death. See, I told you I wasn't good at solving shit, okay? I'm just, I'm just doing my best. Now, in my opinion, this is easily a more iconic duo than uh, Bella and Edward. Am I right, guys? <laughs> and the description of this video is a link to an unlisted video on the original Chess Kids YouTube channel titled 1998. It shows what appears to be a heavily distorted image of a jester or clown type character dancing. Some red text periodically appears on the screen, but it's really hard to decipher. At the very end of the video, the music stops and the jester's face changes to that of a mangled man. Screams can be heard in the background and another image of a face slowly fades into view before the video ends. The next video on the Alhina channel shows an interview with a former employee of Chez Kids. Now to summarize this interview, the former employee states that Sarah was very difficult to work with and she had poor communication with all of her employees. Much of her behavior would honestly be considered um, unpaid labor as some of her artists were also expected to be voice actors and, and take on other jobs that they didn't sign up for. Um, all the while, the media was portraying Sarah as an innocent person. He goes on to state, of course, that uh, once the website disappeared, so did Sarah. He later explains that while he hasn't kept in touch with most of the former employees, Ever since he left, he hasn't been able to shake the feeling of being watched. Right after he says this, the audio cuts and this happens. Might be the medication I got on around the same time, but it's the feeling of it's the feeling of being watched. It's horrible. In the description of the video, we find the following text. Pretty good memory, wouldn't you agree? In the next video titled, No Cheating, we get shown what appears to be a heavily distorted Chez Kids tutorial with even more distorted music playing in the background. The words, make sure, big choice, an image of carrots in a hand, and the words embittered flash momentarily on the screen. An image of a blue heart appears on the screen before the video cuts, and the description on this video reads, you can't hide how ugly you truly are. In the video titled Martyr, we can hear what I assume to be Harry reading the Smiling Man poem from the Farm minigame episode, with an image of what I assume to be Sarah overlaid atop an orange background. The description on this video reads, actions speak louder than words. The video titled All That Is Left shows us a distorted image of a flip phone with a partially cropped image of a man on it. The phone starts buzzing until it goes to voicemail. <laughs> Hello. You reached the phone of Caleb Sky. Sorry I couldn't get to the phone right now. 
Feel free to leave a message and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Okay, bye. A new character is introduced named Caleb Sky. The phone keeps buzzing in this video, and still no one answers the call. Yet another anagram, or cipher of sorts, can be found in the description. Uh, recordings something something. Uh, now try as I might, I couldn't quite figure out what type of cipher this was, but going to the comments section uh, led me to this comment from the commenter ever who introduced me to visionary cipher. Uh, this completely led me down another mathematical rabbit hole, but essentially, if you do the numbers right, uh, you'll end up finding the, uh, the key to the cipher. In this case, the key was Maddie R-O-F-L. Using this key will give you the message, a pain I know all too well. In the last untitled video on the channel, Update, um, after downloading this video, I found there's actually hidden Morse code in the title. It translates to the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Who knows, there's probably other videos with hidden Morse code in the title. I'm going to leave that up to you guys to find out though. We open up to a pair of eyes staring blankly at us with a distorted audio playing in the background. A flower flickers momentarily on the screen before disappearing and then reappearing again. After that, a heavily pixelated image of what I assume to be a house appears before switching to a distorted version of the eyes with text written out on top. The text reads, I think at the core of our memory is music. You see, an elderly woman with Alzheimer's remembers her wedding day by hearing a song. The mind stores information through songs. It can transport you to exactly where you forgot. Distorted music continues to play, and the picture gets well, sillier and sillier before the audio abruptly cuts to black. The footage returns, and now we're in a hallway with the familiar chess kit's aura. We can either go left or right. Instead of exploring further, the player clicks on the box at the end of the hallway. Inside the box is a festive clown. Clicking on the clown causes the game to glitch and the video ends. The description reads, are you free again this time next year? For now, this is all we can find on the strange YouTube channel. Um, now let's head back over to the website. Just below the image of the door that led us to the Alhina YouTube channel, we get a bunch of scrambled text that, that I can only assume is another cipher at this point, but do you think I solved it guys? Fuck no. Again, I'm not the best with ciphers, admittedly, I know, I know, shocking. So if anyone wants to have a crack at this, I'm gonna leave the link to the website down below in the description. I lied! <laughs> Did you really think my little rat brain was gonna let go that easily? Fools! For I found through chat GPT that the, the code, uh, it, it roughly translates to, uh, to this, and, and if I'm wrong, then... <laughs> Then, then, well, shit, I, I did all this sh this fucking shit for no reason then. Scrolling to the bottom of the page takes us to a few links of interest. Clicking on the first link will take you to a page listing all of the characters with their names and backstories. This is where I found the, the character names from before, by the way. Now, with this random placeholder thing sticking out, I couldn't help but look at the page source to see if there were any hidden links. Sure enough, there was one. Clicking on the image source will take you to this page. Who are you running from? Taking a look at the page source provides us with more clues. In the header, we can see the text, where did you go? A link labeled, the way you made me, and alt text stating, say you're sorry. Clicking on the image link shows you this picture of a man, presumably hairy, covered in chocolate pudding. Heading back to the characters page and scrolling all the way down to the bottom, we find a character that is unrecognizable. Clicking on this picture sends you down a complete rabbit hole. It's still the character page from before, only this time it seems to scroll on forever. Eventually, while scrolling down for a bit, you'll find that Ticking Tim's name is now a clickable link. This, however, turns out to be a red herring and only takes you to an error link with the page labeled fun. Again, scrolling down brings us to the mystery character yet again. Clicking on them gives us an alert message. Nosy, nosy, nosy. And the link is labeled, who are you hiding from? Scrolling through this page will reveal several images of the mystery character along the way. And dude, who the fuck do you think you're looking at? Checking the page source reveals some interesting information about the mystery character. Scrolling down to where the image source is, we can see that the alt text describes it as being an oil can. So I guess now we know where the Crisco oil went. Now, only two of these oil can pictures are clickable, so let's go check out the first one. Clicking on the first image takes us to this page, with a very strange image looming in the background. Upon closer inspection, the image appears to be a note for the programmers behind the website, I think. Now, unfortunately,
Unfortunately, the contents of this note were completely indecipherable for me. Never mind, I did in fact manage to find the full version of the image. It was, uh, oddly enough, right in front of my face the whole time. So if you guys want to read it through, I'll give you a moment to pause the video, but yeah, I was right. It's it's just Sarah being a little bit of a pisser. Taking a closer look at the page source once again and heading over to the alt text provides us with some interesting clues. Under the heading for Hopper the Rabbit, the alt text for .png labels the image better luck next time. And just in case you guys are curious, clicking on these .png links will just redirect you back to the, the website link with all the staring eyes from before. Below this alt text, more hidden messages can be found hidden in the alt sections. Under Harry the farm cat, self-soothe. Under Kabuko, Phil. Scrolling all the way down leads us to another image of the oil can, and scrolling even farther shows us this image of two staring eyes labeled high. Clicking on the oil can image leads to a page with the title Woods and the header You Found Me. Sarah's B character fills the entire backdrop of the page, and scrolling down reveals even more clues. Eventually, closer to the bottom, we find text that reads, We need to talk. Now, God, will you calm down? You're always crying. Can you stop? I miss when you were smiling. Smile for me, please. I want you to smile. I want us to smile. Where are you going? Where are you going repeats over and over again. Now, before we continue, I, I want to take note of the song that's playing in the background here. And you guys will find if you ever go to the website, a lot of these pages will actually have music playing in the background. Uh, but in this case, it's a heavily distorted song and the MP3 file is titled Over You. Yet another reference to a breakup, but that does serve as further confirmation, at least in my opinion. At the bottom of the page, there's an image of this uh, crispy Christian Bale looking ass motherfucker. And of course, this leads down another rabbit hole of fun. Clicking on this dude takes us to a link with I saw you in the URL. The mp3 file playing on this page is labeled she's still around and hidden in the alt text is where are you going? Uh, scrolling even farther gives us a link that takes us to this page with nothing but very loud static blasting in the background. If you guys ever decide to explore this website please make sure your your audio is not turned all the way up because it gets very loud sometimes. Now of course we recognize this image as being Sarah. The use of uh oh here would seem to imply that Sarah made a little oopsie poopsie. The page here is also titled Can We Talk and the title of the sound file is Smiling. Scrolling even further down on the previous page will reveal another clickable image which leads us to the same who are you running from page. Heading back over to the home page and clicking on the image of the house takes you to a page showing nothing but a starry night sky with the end of the link titled Memories. Uh, there's some text at the top of this page that reads, and right about here, whoa, you can really see the sky from here. This can be our little spot, away from all that junk. Can I ask you something? Is everything okay? Yeah, it's just all of this. You aren't making sense. I just want things to stay like this. Yeah. What is it? Your smile. It's cute. Not as cute as yours. Your lips are like cherries. You flatter me. I'm so lucky. You have no idea. Trust me, I'm the lucky one. You're warm. Here, it's getting late. We should get out of here. Will I see you tomorrow? Of course. Now this page literally scrolls on for miles, but some more text can be found a little closer to the bottom. Here you'll find the timestamp 1046 and the phrase late night conversation. Heading back over to the home page, we have one more link to explore. Uh, nosy, nosy, nosy. Clicking on this link takes us to this page with who are you running from displayed in the header. Mayhill Farms is in the URL and the page is titled You're Pathetic. Now, if you guys squint really, really, really hard at this part, um, you might notice a teeny weeny itsy bitsy little picture. Viewing the image shows us that these are initials, and I, I think we can both guess who these people are at this point. Now, this probably symbolizes that thing you do, you know, with your uh, with your sweetie pie, your your honey bun, your squeeze, your your hootsie tootsie, you know, uh, just just carving your initials into a the old cherry tree out back, you know, and then George Washington comes around and he chops he chops down the tree. Interestingly, above the image of the initials, we can see a little message typed out, and it reads, "My old treehouse was right there." 
Ha ha. Again, in the page source, we can find a few more clues as well. In the alt text for the initials image, we find the words, I miss it. Last but not least, if you guys were curious about the blue heart link, it takes us back to the no cheating video on the Alhina YouTube channel. Now there is another thing on the website that I, I do want to take a look at. If you guys recall, in the video titled Chess Kits Upload 2004-3-11, there's an interesting set of numbers placed at the end, and putting these numbers at the end of the URL will give you another web page. And I've never related to a single phrase more than I do now. Um, this is all the stuff that I was able to find without the assistance of the Wikipedia page. God, I'm so sorry. I really tried. I, I tried. Believe me, I did. It, it was hard, okay? Now this link here takes you to what appears to be some sort of blog page belonging to a guy named Mark. Clicking on the picture of Mark takes you to this um, page here with some sort of distorted uh, beeping slash muffled screaming sound playing in the background. The URL ends in what it says, and the page is titled Ultra. The image of his face is titled Goodbye Forever, and the alt text reads, My face feels like it's on fire. It stings so much. The image of the red structure is titled Nevermore, and the MP3 file, turn that off, it's late. Clicking on each link reveals more about what's happening behind the scenes. Uh, the first one takes you to a sound compilation over on the uh, Chess Kids YouTube channel. The second, an image of the same red structure with key at the end of the URL, and the title, The Choices We Make. The third link, a page with a heavily distorted song playing, appropriately labeled Band, and the word night at the end of the URL. Scrolling to the very bottom of the page takes you to, oh, oh hello again. Uh, the fourth link takes you back to the who are you running from page, only this time Bishop is at the end of the link. The fifth link takes you to an absolute masterpiece. Look at him. Look at that pizza man go. He, he's doing it. Look, look at him. Now you might notice there's a link below this video. Let's click on it, shall we? The video here plays normally for about a minute or so, with the exception of the orange anomaly in the corner and the static in the background. And then we hear this. I just want to be the fucking person! Do what's that? The video continues to play out like this, briefly cuts to black, and then finally shows a pixelated image of what looks like Sarah, maybe. And that's all that really happens. The last link merely takes you back to the Chess Kids website. Heading over to the Wikipedia page gives us a few other links that we missed in the beginning. First, let's take a look at this one. We see the reference to a blue heart again with someone's face in the middle. A cryptic audio plays in the background, and we can hear what sounds like someone whispering in reverse. Now, despite playing around with the audio a bit, I couldn't quite make out the details of what was being said. Um, if you guys have any ideas, I'll go ahead and play two versions of this audio out here. Uh, first, I'm going to play the original, and then what I'm going to do is play the reversed version. And I also, in the reversed version, I went ahead and turned down the music that was playing in the background. <laughs> Now this one, okay, hear, hear me out, hear, hear me out, guys. This one, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was meant to be a joke because if it isn't, I'm truly concerned. Um, there's not much else to this page that I could find apart from the end of the URL being everyone and the title being bored. The header says nothing more than everyone get out your markers, <laughs> which could be just a funny little reference to how us ARG sleuths are, are gonna need our markers for just about every goddamn thing on this website. I'm fine. You can tell I had a good night. Uh, this page shows us a very familiar poem. You might recognize this one from one of the videos we watched previously, and you'd be correct. Um, it's the poem about the hair, again, and I'm pretty sure I might know the meaning to this one. 
one, but we'll touch on that again a bit later. Scrolling down further, we eventually run into a sideways image of the Jester character. Clicking on the Jester takes us to a very loud page, if you ask me. Again, we see even more images of the, jo the Joker, with the end of the URL containing the word hopping, and the title of the page being Be Out Of. Heading to the page source gives us more information. The directory for the background URL, for example, is wish.jpg. The Jester image is titled Wish, and the title of the MP3 file is What Will Make Him Happy. Now I'm going to play this turned down version of that MP3 file here, but just in case you guys are super sensitive to loud sounds, I'm going to leave a timestamp for those of you that want to skip. <laughs> The next page I want to take us to is this one. The end of the URL contains the word pretty, and the title of the page is Isn't She? In the paragraph section, we can see the word talker with a cryptic song playing in the background and a pixelated image of Sarah. The title of the MP3 file that plays in the background is called timer underscore 8TES. The other hidden URL takes us here, a page with what appears to be an image of wildflowers in the background. The end of the URL contains the word choices, and the title of the page is Games Are Supposed to Be Fun. Again, at the top of the page, we see another reference to a blue heart. The directory used for the background image is labeled happy. The last page is this one. There's nothing in the page source on this link at all. Only the words no one else in the URL and the phrase nothing to see here, stop hurting yourself. Well, that just about does it for the website. And thank fucking God. And guess what, guys? Go, go on, guess. G guess what it- guess what- guess- guess what, guys? Can you tell by the length of, of the video what it is yet? Can you tell by my bloodshot eyes? We have even more ground to cover, baby. Uh, now we're gonna go and take a gander at all the social media pages that Chess Kids has to offer. Starting off with the Instagram, I I'm not gonna bore you guys with too much of the filler posts that don't necessarily pertain to the story, so we'll just focus on the important ones for now. If you guys recall the red farm cat story from earlier on in the series, you might remember how I wasn't able to read jack shit. Well, now we have a solution uh, to that problem because they gave us a transcript on the Instagram for the entire story. Let's read together, shall we? Way down on the hillside of Marlin, Oregon, lived Harry the Red cat. Every day he tended to his crops and lived a happy life alone from anyone. Harry was happy. Harry was free as a farm cat. One day it was hot out and Harry saw his crops were beginning to wilt. He panicked and worried all his hard work would be for nothing. All his berries gone, all his carrots gone, all his flowers and peas gone. It was now or never. Harry knew that without rain, he couldn't have his crops grow, so he thought and thought until he got an idea. To save his crop, Harry would have to take the water from his water heater inside his little house and cover his farm in water. Sure, it's boiling, but it has to work. Now, right as everything gets a little funky, uh, a message quickly flashes on the screen, and it says the following. Hey, so this is literally just um, a transcript of the interview portion with uh, Sarah in one of the earlier episodes, if you guys remember that. So uh, feel free to pause and uh, read it through. But uh, yeah, it's, it's literally just a carbon copy of that interview. At first glance, this does seem to be an excerpt taken from an interview with Sarah Trills. Now the question is, what business does this have being in a video about Harry the Farm Cat? The next post of interest is an image taken from what I'm assuming is Sarah Trills' is a college or university. Um, it's labeled Minds of Our Future Oregon State and mentions an interview with Sarah for her upcoming project. We can assume that this project was likely the Chess Kids website. In one of the newer posts, an advertisement for an upcoming interview with Sarah Trills is shown. This seems to be broadcasted on some type of college radio network. Now, this is where things start to get a little spooky, okay? Uh, there's a picture of a sad-looking goober, and the message in the post reads, Oh, oh god fucking damn it! I seriously can't. When it comes to the Vinginary Cypher, or any other type of Cypher for that matter, I'm sorry, I, I, I just can't, I give up. So, I took to the comments once more, and this comment from Zif... 
Zef God, your, your fucking username is a Vengineery cipher. God. This comment from Zephyr explains the details of the message. Okay, do you have any information on the blue talking minigame? That's the one. I really remember playing a lot, sort of like a fortune teller. Please let me know if you have any leads. Now the rest of the posts are just screen caps from lost minigames on the website. So far there doesn't seem to be any more types of secrets on the Instagram page, so I'm gonna leave it up to you guys to scour over the rest. Making our way over to the Chez Kids Twitter, you'll f you'll find. Oh God. Oh, oh dear God, they know. They they fucking know. Okay, you know what? Fuck the Twitter. I, I need time to process this. L let's go back to the Reddit page instead, shall we? Now, I'm going to admit, most of what is on the Reddit page was a bit hard for me to crack without referencing the comments for guidance. And yes, we are going to be dealing with many more ciphers at this point. Oh, oh boy. Starting out with the first post, or rather comment, on this Reddit account, we are given a strange code. I tried putting the code at the end of the Chez Kids website URL, and it led me straight to the Who Are You Running From page. This one was probably a false alarm. The next post is yet another coded message with a link to an unlisted YouTube video. Yeah, I, I couldn't find out what the message meant, okay? I, I couldn't. I couldn't figure it out. Anyways, clicking on the link takes us here. Well, she was just 17. You know what I mean? And the way she looked was way beyond compare. So, so how can I, I dance with another? Now the title could be a reference to the younger employee named Lucy that was introduced on the website. Um, and I guess now we know that something bad probably happened to her too based on this video existing. Another code is mentioned in the third Reddit post. Again, I tried this one out by putting it at the end of the ch uh, the, ch the the web, you know, I put it at the end of the URL and I even tried to see if it was an unlisted YouTube video. Still no clues on that. Again, there's literally a fuck ton of these these codes that I couldn't figure out for the life of me because I'm, I'm just god awful when it comes to ciphers. If you guys want to help a girl out with this one up, please head over to the Reddit page or better yet, just head over to all the the pages and just figure it out because I certainly couldn't. Scrolling through the Reddit page some more will bring us to a hidden link cipher that is yet to be solved and an image of a screaming face. Lovely. After the screaming face post comes a post talking about a lost mini game on the Chess Kids website. It was a chatbot that contained a cartoon face. The OP or writer of this message explains that it helped them learn how to type better. After this, the next post is is metal as fuck. I mean, it, it just says this. I can play games too! Weaponize your memories! God, you can't tell me that's not metal. Jesus. The next post after this is just... It's just a video of, of ground beef, I think, or maybe some salami. Again, I'm going to turn down the audio for this one, but if you're extremely sensitive to loud sounds, then go ahead and skip to this timestamp here. I can't make out what's being said here, but it does sound like a shitty one-liner from the cool cat himself. Again, uh, this next one that you see on your screen here is a code, and I could not figure it out. Someone, someone, please, for the love of God, help me with this, please. Now, here is where things get interesting again. The next post in the Reddit timeline takes us to a Twitter Q&A page. Uh, again, I, I wouldn't have been able to figure this out myself, but apparently everyone else did, so thanks guys. Um, now, I'm pretty sure this is where the Redditors managed to get the code from, but scrolling through the replies section, we can see that each reply from the Chess Kids account contains the occasional letter and number. Uh, by using the key stress and headaches, Redditors were able to find a link to this video. <laughs> For a split second, you might have noticed a message regarding a quick trick and something relating to the speed of a game. It's unclear what the rest of the text says, at least to me, unfortunately. Um, going down to the description will reveal another code. 
While no one has been able to solve this code yet, it's believed to be a scrambled YouTube link. Moving on to the next post, we get yet another message hinting at a past relationship. Now, at first, this might look like, you know, just another uh, silly little trick, um, maybe another cipher, if you will, but my big brain knew better than that. This is actually written out in old medieval German, and based on my rough understanding, is a reference to an old poem from the same time period. I wasn't able to verify the author of this poem, but after doing some digging, I was able to find it in a PDF file from UNC Studies in Germanic Languages and Literature. Uh, the English translation of the poem is as follows. The title of the poem is, I always shall cherish the day of all days. I always shall cherish the day of all days when first I met her whose charm I extol. The loveliest manner and feminine ways. I'm glad that I have her, my heart and my soul. This cannot harm her and does me much good. Now I know God and the world as I should, since through her virtue my errors shall cease. I hope that through her all my joys will increase. I parted from her, and before I could tell the lady how greatly my passion had grown, later a wonderful hour befell as I discovered her walking alone. When fate had led me to her I admire, and I had told her my fondest desire. She was so kind, may God grant her her renown. She was and shall be forever my crown. Although my body may sometimes take leave, my heart and my longing must linger with her. She may bring sadness and cause me to grieve, yet drive from my heart all the troubles that stir. From her I have my pleasure as well as my pain. What she desires of me, she shall obtain. When I am happy, it's due to her care. God keep her honor and her is my prayer. Okay, clearly this guy has got himself all muddled up in a toxic situationship. I mean, I mean, what gives? Oh, well, well I'm gonna tell you exactly what what gives, what, what I, what I, what I think gives. <laughs> Now, we've got a lot of information to sort through here, and I'm gonna try my best to do everything uh, succinctly here. Uh, first, let's start off with what we know for certain. Now, currently we have at least a handful of character names that we can confirm. Uh, Caleb Skye, Lucy, Sarah Trills, Mark Lowell, Ellen Masterson, and uh, Harrison Michaels, I believe. Now, if you guys didn't really fill in the blanks already, I will bring y'all up to speed on what I feel is true, or at least mostly true about these characters' backstories and how they sort of relate to each other. Sarah Trills was an aspiring website programmer or web developer and former uh, college student at Oregon State. She's close friends with Ellen Masterson and acquaintances with her brother Caleb. Um, she decides to start her own business from the ground up and an incredibly ambitious one at that. She wants to make her own website featuring various um, kid-friendly games and pitches the idea to Ellen. Now soon they both agree to work together on the creation of Chess Kids and they bring along a handful of other employees, likely fellow students of Oregon State. Now this of course includes Mark, Harrison, Caleb, and Lucy. Uh, judging by this post here on the Chess Kids Instagram, there's likely a few other employee names that I wasn't really able to catch. Um, if you guys have any clues on that, feel free to drop them below in the comments. Things start to turn really sour really fast for the Chess Kids team. Um, Sarah is, um, you know, for lack of a better word, a dipshit. Um, she's nothing but a silly goose. Think Michael Scott, but... Sarah Trills. Based on the interview with Caleb Sky, we can gather how condescending Sarah was to employees, and she even forced them to do labor that they never signed up to do in the first place. Um, it's also implied through several videos and places on the Chess Kids website that Sarah was also once in a romantic relationship with Harrison at a certain point in time. Especially with the deliberate choice of having Chester sing the cover of I'll Get You. I personally believe this song was in reference to Sarah, especially when you pay attention to the lyrics. It almost sounds like he was trying to force his love onto Sarah, who just wasn't having it. Now, of course, based on all the hints we've gotten so far, we can also discern that their relationship certainly didn't last. If you guys remember in the poem episode, one of the poems tells the story of a rabbit that was intruding on the writer's carrot garden. The writer grabs their pew pew stick and unalives the rabbit, making it into a stew filled with carrots. I personally believe that the carrots in this situation 
are an analogy for Sarah, and the rabbit is an analogy for someone Harrison suspected Sarah of cheating on him with. Um, why cheating, you may ask? Well, on the Alhina channel, there's literally a video titled No Cheating, and that's enough evidence for me. Now, if we're going to assume that the carrot garden is an analogy for Sarah, we need to also apply this same logic to the farm minigame episode. On the Instagram, uh, we were able to get the full transcript of the story of this game. It explains how Harry the farm cat, who is very clearly an analogy for Harrison at this point, uh, decided to water his crops with boiling water from inside his house. To me, this seems like Harrison unalived Sarah by essentially just throwing boiling water on her and turning her into a bowl of carrot stew. Uh, unfortunately, this isn't the only person who got, you know, caught up in uh, Harrison's silly business. Back on Mark's blog, we get a little more insight on what might have happened to him. By clicking on one of his selfies and getting to this page, viewing the page source reveals this alt text. My face feels like it's on fire. It stings so much. To me, the implications are pretty clear here. Now that we know you know, roughly how both Sarah and Mark lost their lives, which was by, you know, it was via boiling water. <laughs> uh, this is how I think the whole situation played out. At one point or another, Harrison ends up chasing Sarah into the woods where he eventually finishes her off. I came to this conclusion based on the text from the uh, woods web page on the, on the website. It really does seem like a sequence where, you know, she was trying to run away from him, she was crying and all that stuff and he just wouldn't stop chasing her it seems. Now as far as who it was that wandered into the woods in the forest adventure episode I guess seemingly looking for Sarah I, I'm pretty uncertain about that. I'm not sure if this was supposed to be from Harrison's perspective or another person who potentially knew Sarah, potentially Mark. Um, either way based on the poem and the farm video we can some somewhat theorize that Harrison has unalived at least two people. Now as several points during the series, there's uh, coded messages that appear in the descriptions of various videos on the Chess Kids YouTube channel. I chose not to touch on these too much, however, as I'm really bad at cracking uh, ciphers, and I, I try to avoid going to the comments section if at all possible. Uh, I try to answer most of these things as much as I can with my own uh, intuition. And unfortunately with this series, you know, I realized that I, I couldn't fully avoid going to the comment section at all, uh, as that's that's where a lot of the clues are currently hidden. So um, consider this sort of your invitation to go check this series out for yourselves and, uh, you know, try your luck at it. Try cracking one of these bad boys open. Let me know what you find. Because I promise, I promise you guys, there is a lot of stuff that I definitely miss. So I, I like with this series and all the other you know, unfictions and ARGs that I've talked about. I really encourage you guys to actually go check it out for yourselves because I promise you it's likely you're going to find some stuff that I miss. And I'm going to be honest with you guys, a lot of that's intentional on my end because I, I do want you guys to actually go, you know, watch these videos for yourselves. I don't want you I don't want you guys just getting all all the information from me. That that's no fun. Please do consider it. Now, it's also unclear to me what happened to the uh, other employees, but it is heavily implied that Something terrible also happened to Caleb and Lucy. Um, that one's a little bit trickier for me because I, I, I can't exactly discern what the motive would be to basically unalive all your coworkers if it really is Harrison that did it. Um, perhaps it was because people knew too much about Harrison. You know, maybe he felt like it was the only way he could destroy all the ev evidence and cover his tracks. I don't know. Again, all the links uh, will be in the description below if you guys want to take a crack at this. But um, yeah, as always, thank you guys so much for hearing me uh, run my mouth for God knows how long. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Mm -hmm.